Let's start by opening up 01 adding wall.rp file. And we're going to start this exercise with adding walls. Walls are perhaps the most basic component of any building project. Certainly, they are one of the first objects that you will want to master when you are learning Revit. Walls have many settings that we can interact with. And in this clip, we will take a look at the basic features of the wall command and get started just by creating some simple walls. So on the architectural tab, if we click on the drop down list, you will see wall architecture. Or we can simply use the keyboard command W A to get into the basic wall drawing. And with this, you will notice that we will move on to modify place wall F. And on the left hand portion here, it will be largely consistent commands, no change. But on the right side here, you will find that there is a new draw tab with lines and simple shapes available. Let's start by drawing a few simple shapes, starting with the line function. Now, you will also notice that below at the left-hand corner here, there will be certain prompts that we can pay attention to. For example, in this case, it says click to enter the wall start point. So we can pretty much click anywhere to start. For example, just a left click here, and then we can just right, just drag rightwards over with our mouse. We just mouse over rightwards, and you'll find that we can now. Revit will provide us some dimensions of the length itself. And then with this, we can just say, and the click somewhere here. We will tap on the escape key twice to complete the command or to finish off the command. You will find that this distance is now drawn at 3.2 meters. We can click on this blue dimension here to make it more precise to say 3000 if we want to draw an exact 3 meter line here. I'm going to use the same wall command again, WA. And I'm going to join in from this point here. Notice that when I mouse, when I first mouse over this, there is a cool colored box here that will allow me to join to the previous endpoint. It's almost like an auto inbuilt snap. And I can choose to I can choose to draw it in a, in a non orthogonal angle. Like for example, by default, although it is starting at angle of zero, angle of 90 degrees, but I can move around and I can draw it in non-orthogonal angles. Now notice as I zoom closer a little bit, the angles can be a little bit more fine-tuned. Okay, more fine-tuned as I go closer and closer. So in this case, I'm going to try to draw it at a, at a 30 degree incline, 30 degree angle. Next, I'm going to show you the key difference between one escape and two escape. Keeping with the WA command, wall, architectural. So I'll just continue to draw at this point here. Continue from this point down, and let's say I draw it at 45 degrees at 4 meters. Now, after I'm done with this point, you notice that the command would allow me to continue drawing until I stop the command. So, there are two ways to do this. I can click on the modify one time to finish the command, or I can press the escape key one time to stop the command, or I can press escape key two times to stop the command. Okay, so I'm going to show you the difference now. So I'm going to press the escape key one time, and notice that I managed to terminate the wall 
command, terminate the wall that extends out. But if you notice here, I am actually still within the modify place wall command. Compared to, okay, let me undo this again. I'll try again, all right? Compared to, again, I place this at 4 meters at 45 degrees. Compared to when I press escape twice, and you will now notice that I am back out to the architectural tab, in which this is the main mode. So this is uh, quite a bit of a difference and uh, a, little, a little bit of you getting used to the user interface. I would like to elaborate on the function of cave here inside the inside the same place wall command okay so by default the chain function is tick and made available so what the what's the function really do what happens is when we start drawing you notice that i can continuously click on the line and go This way. Notice that this is a continuous line here. Compared to when I switch off the chain command, okay, the chain function here, what would happen is when I start doing the same thing again also, you notice that it breaks away. And when I draw it again, it breaks. And when I draw again, same thing happens. This way. So do you now see the difference between the chain function activated and the chain function deactivated? We are also not limited by choice to only just draw lines. We can also draw simple shapes like rectangles, inscribed polygon, circumscribed polygon, circles. So we can try to try to just draw just draw a rectangle this way or an inscribed polygon and a circumscribed polygon and also a circle. Next, I want to talk about a bit about the start and radius arc. So once we activate the command, do make sure the chain is on. So the creation method would be, we pay attention to the lower left-hand corner here. Rabbit will instruct or guide us on how to create this. It says here, click to enter arc wall start point. We can almost do this by clicking on the, the leftmost start point and then we'll click on the rightmost end point and then we will create the, the arc bulge from let's say here. Now notice that when I have the chain command on, I can create the end, the right end point again and then I can drag down and you notice here I'm beginning to create a uh, almost like a little curve wave happening okay I can do this again I repeat and then bulge and do this and bulge downwards 
So I can use this method to create this continuous uh, curve this way. And finally, closing in this way. Okay. Next, I want to be working on this. Okay, we're going to click on this. All right, center and arc. We're going to pay attention to the click to enter arc wall center. So it's, all, it's almost as if we are drawing a semicircle here by clicking on the center point and then pulling it out. Notice as we are doing this, it is almost similar to what we're doing when we are creating a circle, except this time around we will click on the leftmost point and then we can get to decide what angle we want to, we want to terminate it at. So in this case, I'm going to try to end it at about 100 and I'm going to end it at about 135 degrees or so. Here. Okay. I can also do the same by simply just keying in 135. And you notice that the auto entry prompt will appear here. Okay. So all I need to do is just key enter. And I will have the arc at exactly. 135 degrees this way. Next, I'm going to talk about this part here on tangent and arc. Now, before we do this, we need to draw two walls. So I'm going to just draw one straight wall here and another straight wall and starting from here ending here. So what happens is this tangent arc end will draw a connecting arc this way from here to here. So we're going to do this. Click on tangent and arc and we will click on the first point and then we will move to the second point. And this is how you will, you will join up this way. Next I'm going to touch on fillet arc. So let's find us a little bit of length space here. Before we can use this command, we need to draw a line, straight line wall first, with a corner, all right? So the creation method would be WA, then we look for fillet arc, and with this, we will just need to pick on two walls that will form a corner. So clicking on here and here, you realize that the creation would create an arc here, a fillet here, this way. Next, I'm going to cover a very useful function inside the wall creations. So it is under this part, WA, and we look for this command here called pick line. But before we do so, we need to create some lines first. So let's just zoom, go ahead and zoom out. And I'm going to just go to architecture, model line, to just quickly create a few uh, perimeter wall lines this way. I find this to be particularly useful, especially when we import lines drawn from AutoCAD into Revit, and this will allow us to quickly create the wall just simply by using this command. So I have created a bunch of lines drawn here, okay, and 
I'm going to go to architecture, war, war architecture, and I'm going to use the pick lines command. So what happens is when we click on pick lines, Revit will convert that particular line into a wall. All right, let me just undo this again to show you. However, if we still remember our user interface commands, right? So when we mouse over this, before we click on it, we press on the tab key. It will allow us to select the entire perimeter before we use the left click key. And in this way, we can create the entire perimeter of the wall with just one pick here. All right.